Okay, hello. Welcome back to my channel again. Now what you see on the desk today is another TV. And this one just happens to be a Samsung model. So I'm gonna tell you how I got this one. We're gonna tell you like we're gonna show it to you after we operate, we're gonna look at the menu a little bit, and then gonna do the the um, overall review afterwards. And plus I'm actually gonna plug some in so that way you can actually see how its pencil looks. So anyway, this is the this is a Samsung TV. I actually now the way I got this one is I got it at a yard sale for fifteen dollars, and I'm gonna show you that on the back afterwards. Now, now okay, I kind of do have to be careful with VS TV a little bit because the base when I got it has no screws, <laughs> and for, it, it, like every single time I move it, it's like a TV comes off the base when I forget that it has no screws. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> so, so I have to figure out. I have to be kind of careful with this when I move it over a little bit. I am going to get screws for it eventually, but <laughs> I just let you know that right now it has no screws. So obviously. If I want to take the TV and just lift it up, you see, like, kind of see, like, right here, it comes off the base. <laughs> so, can't be really level careful with this. Oh, and also, this is not the original remote control. I had this remote control. This is just, like, a another Samsung we have. We have, like, five Samsungs. We have, like, before this, and I had, like, a spell Samsung remote line around, so I just keep it with this one. Just so I have a remote control and control what it with. So anyway. Now, when I both got this TV, it was actually kind of a little bit confused. I tried to figure out how to turn it on. <laughs> because, like, when I first went to test it. Heal the side buttons. Heal the side buttons on it. Now. Those are side buttons. So I went to look out the side and turn it on. I'm like, uh, how am I supposed to turn it on? There's no power button out here. <laughs> so I was like, source, menu, volume, and channel. No power. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, how, how do I turn this thing on? <laughs> Not knowing it, the power button is actually in the, in the front right here. <laughs> so of course I thought, oh, that's a power LED that comes on when you when it turns on. But no, I plugged it in and the power LED is also low too. <laughs> Or well, the standby light, I should call it, since it really isn't a power on LED. So, like on the Scott and the Shelf and on the Sylvania and the other ones that I do have to do videos on, this one is no power on LED. So, standby light. But, that's the way most Samsung's for this time period and new OO. Even the newer Samsung's have it this way. So anyway. Gonna show the back side of it now. Oh, and by the way. Don't get confused with the HDTV thing in the corner. This does not have a digital tuner. <laughs> Which really confused me when I first got it. I was like, wait, how do I do a channel scan on this? <laughs> but it doesn't have a digital tuner. So, oh, okay. So I have to kind of move it like this. Make sure the base stays on. Okay. So here's the back side of it. Okay. So here's the back side of it. Now, let's go ahead and look at the inputs. So, kind of similar to the Scott, <laughs> it has two components in. And it. And I like the Scott. This actually has two AV, but one of the AV ones has S video on it. <laughs> so. Now, what else do we have on here? Well, we have HDMI in, which obviously is as well as old old TVs. It has this. We have VGA in, with audio, of course. I mean, if the other one, it was like, oh, VGA, like, where's the audio? And then we have antenna in, which is analog only. I kind of wish it was digital. And we have the component, two sets of component, which I think was a trend on the TVs for this time period. So it's two sets of component on these. <laughs> And then you have the audio out slash headphones jack. This is the only audio out that this TV has. This this up here is audio in, but this is audio out right here. So now what I like about this TV is 
that you can actually detach the power cord. Which, see, comes right off like that. And it just uses a steno connector. So I just stick it right back on it though. Now, come over here to the tag on the back. You can see this is about LN S23, which is just a 23 inch, and then it says 38W, and then the C right here. I don't know if I've raised anything, but have the entire model code underneath there, which usually I don't ever go for that. <laughs> I don't ever look at stuff. And this is actually older than the Scott because it's actually from May of 2006. So older than the Scott and also older than the Sylvania since that's a 2010 model. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, you kind of see a $15 thing up there. Now, what I find funny about Samsung is that they take, they don't put digital tunnels inside their TVs. But they put wallmount bracket holes on the back. So you can actually wall mount this. <laughs> I mean, why does Scott not have that? <laughs> and obviously it has the Samsung logo, but like again, no one's looking at the back of the TV really, except for when they need to connect it up to something. <laughs> so let's go ahead and turn this back to the front. We're gonna plug it in and we're gonna see, see, turn on. Again, stead heads of scooters, so. <laughs> So, put this in, oh, we're going to tell you about, I just keep the cord wrapped around the bottom like this, on these TVs, because I don't use them much. So, now, the previous owner said that they used to use this for gaming, and, now, I plugged it in, now. You see a power light though. It's gonna flash for a sec. And now it's back on. But they said that they used this for gaming. And my guess was that this thing was used for hundreds of thousands of hours. Or at least tens of thousands of hours, that is. Not hundreds of thousands. That'll be like over 10 years of constant use, but. <laughs> <laughs> but. But like. That's what my guess is. I don't know. But anyway, we're gonna take the uh, not original remote, which I'm also gonna show you the buttons out here a little bit. So power source, number keys, the... Now this is from a newer model. <laughs> so I know it doesn't look the exact same. So we have volume, channel list, view, channel ones, and then the arrows with media, play, menu, favorite channels, tools. We told it starts with like, do anything, exit, info, the arrows and the okay button, colors, A, B, and C, D, MTS, picture size, and closed captioning. So, anyway, <laughs> just gonna turn this TV on now. So, let's see what it does. Okay. So, right now it's on HDMI. And yes, again, it has a blue screen turn on. But, <laughs> let's go ahead and look at the size a little bit. <laughs> now, obviously, this is where the source list is. Yeah, right now I have nothing connected to it. <laughs> You can actually edit the name on this one, unlike on the Scott. Mm -hmm. Now, picture. Obviously, as soon as I got this TV into my hands, you probably know exactly what happened. <laughs> yep, I changed every show all the time. <laughs> so. And then we have size, which always has 16 by 9. It does have, like, zoom, but that's always grayed out. Just always function, which just is off and on. And I uh, contrast, which I always turn off. On this sound, we have custom sound mode, obviously, and then I, I always search equalizer like, just randomly. Mm -hmm. MTS, which is stereo, all volume, which I always, always, always turn this off. If I see that turned on, it annoys me. And then we have channel, we can't really do that because this is on HDMI. And we have the other setup, so we have plug and play, which is disabled. We have language, which is obviously set to English. You can obviously Set to the three main ones, as well as has Portuguese out here, which really doesn't make sense. <laughs> have game mode, which is off, but you can tell you how if you have a game system hooked up. Oh yeah, game mode really does, it just changes like the, on this TV, I think it just changes the response time, really. Time, which I don't have set up right now. Me trip and capture though, disabled because it's not on the correct input. Energy saving, I always keep that off. Blue screen is on, melody is off, but I can 
turn that on later. I just keep all it. I this is just a default setting up. It's other leads. I haven't changed any of those. But but I am going to plug into Moku. So that, that way we can have a little picture quality thing. Okay. Okay. So I did plug into Moku. Now, this TV, unlike the Scott, is not as bad as the lines uh, on this. I don't know if it's a panel type or what, but the Scott when we call it has like all the lines. So but but I do notice something. But I do notice something with this TV. So you see how it says right now 1080i? Or the 1080p? This TV doesn't support 1080p, but it does support 720p. Now I don't know if you can kind of see this on like video or not, but you might be able to see it like slightly dropping it down. This is because it's a dental signal, so it's got one set of lines going and then the next set, and then it's back and forth and back and forth. It's supposedly supposed to for like a I think a smoother image, but I don't like it. <laughs> so I'm gonna proceed to change this to 1080p. I mean 720p. This TV just supports 1080, but it can do 720, so let me change it to 720. <laughs> Okay. Let's go to clearly. Okay. Okay, so now it says Tove by 720 at 60 hertz. This is actually a progressive signal. Now, immediately look at this TV. It doesn't have the best picture quality. And I could tell. So I want you to do, I want you to look at the Netflix symbol a little bit. See how the colors kind of look a little bit like bleeding and like. Whatever, it has like a little bit of like color fringing going on. Yeah, same with the YouTube icon. But then again, the TV icon is the exact same way. Kind of see like down there a little bit, so. Kind of doesn't look right. But again, I'm not that worried, this TV is old. And TVs from this time period usually have that. <laughs> so anyway, let's go ahead and go on to YouTube and let me just. Turn the volume all the way out since I don't want sound. Okay. Okay, so, what we're going to do is, I was going to the guest for this, just so it doesn't ruin my recommendations. With... <laughs> okay, so we're going to go to put on the color bars. Okay, now we are going to turn the light off, so you can kind of see this. Now, yes, I know there's light coming from external sources, but whatever. Okay, so what I want you to look at... <laughs> Is I want you to look at these color bars. Now on video, it really doesn't show the best, but we'll actually look at three things here. So what I like to look at on this is down here. As you can see from directly facing this, this actually looks okay to me. This doesn't. And again, I changed all the settings on this, so it should look okay. But it doesn't seem like it's really causing any issues down there in that particular section. Now the next thing I look at, again this is three things I said, is does the green look green, the red look red, and the blue look blue? To me it kind of looks like the green is slightly a bit too high, but the red looks red and the blue looks blue to me. It doesn't look like whatever. Now the third thing, which is TV is actually very very bad at. Is, is it able to put one color right next to it or cello? Like, smoothly, like, transition smoothly. What I'm noticing is that you can kind of see, like, right here, it doesn't really look the best. So, this TV is kind of bad with color, with color accuracy and whatever. But then again, this is a science that I always say it to. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do now, you're gonna just ignore YouTube. And I am going to tell you something. With the Roku on its screen like this, I'm gonna change the pixel signs to dynamic, which is its default. So as you can see, it kind of looks similar. But let's change it to standard, 
which is just the same as dynamic, just with a higher brightness sign. <laughs> Movie, which obviously is the dimmest, and as a result of this, they also doesn't really look as bad, but it for some reason throws the throws it really really dim and custom, which actually kind of brightens it back up. Now. I do want you to hear the melody on this, since this is an old TV. So, so what we're going to do is I'm going to turn it on right now. Okay. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but <laughs> that is. Now, for the power off melody to occur, you have to have the volume on. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now that you held that, now I'm pretty much ready to unplug the TV for power. And I can go you know, give like my eyes reviewed all that on this particular TV. So I have it unplugged as you can see. So let me just place this TV back away it was, like onto the desk here. So I'm gonna remove my phone bed so I can it's only fat that now this TV takes a while for the light to turn off when you unplug it. Okay, and it just went out now. So now all my honest opinions on this particular TV. Well the only thing I don't really like about it is the colors. Not really being the best, like, with all the color fridge a little bit and stuff like that. And the fact that when I got it, the stand had no scoops. <laughs> they did not even say that. I was like, wait, why is the stand coming right off as soon as I brought it? And, like, when I went to put it into the car, I was like, wait, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> not really, the stand had no scoops. <laughs> so obviously because of that, the stand comes right off. <laughs> but, hey, at least... A TV is walking and and it's good thing. So anyway, what is my honest opinion on this TV? Well, I'm gonna give it like a six and a half out of ten because one, the color issues, and the sound also really isn't the best on this. Even though it actually has fun firing speakers, it doesn't really sound the best. Kind of like the uh, LG, the newer LG, it's around the same size <laughs> they have, but. <laughs> and. And the fact that the owners are actually with me when I got it, they were actually very nice to me. They just did not disclose the fact that the stand had no screws, so. <laughs> as soon as I bought it home, I was like, wait, this doesn't seem right. <laughs> but. But it did pretty well for gaming. It did pretty well video-wise, like, I was able to watch, like, uh, several minutes worth of videos, uh, over an hour of videos on this TV, and it hasn't disappointed me with videos. So, so yeah, that's a good thing. So, anyway, I will give it a 7 out, out of 10 if the picture look, just looked a little bit better. But... But anyway, and the fact that it, I also rate it like six and a half out of ten is because the fact is that it has no digital tuno, which means that when the two thousand nine transition to DTV occurred, this TV was obsolete. <laughs> and like I, I bet they like they spent like eight hundred dollars on this TV and for like three years of use. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. So anyway, this is going to be the end of this video. And I'm going to end it off this saying that that this TV, I am going to keep it though. But it's just not the best TV that I have. Like, I honestly prefer the Scott TV over this one. For, in terms of everything. Anyway, I'm going to close out the video now, so... Anyway, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Just showing you that I got this TV. You're probably going to see it again in the future. Probably, so, yeah.
Anyway. Love you all, and as always, bye for now, and peace out, everyone.